Hey guys and girls, in our quest to get the cleanest picture we possibly can get on a uh, Garmin live scope on the front of our boat, we're gonna change and put an eight, uh, eight gauge independent wire running from the battery up to the front of the boat. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. When I say we, I mean mostly my son, Jamie. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna undo something first. We're not gonna really do a lot of undoing, but we're gonna undo a little bit. We're gonna take the uh, we're gonna take the Dewalt battery system off of our uh, off of our live scope and uh, go back to wiring back up uh, to a 12 volt battery. But we're gonna run an eight gauge wire. We're gonna run an eight gauge wire back to the battery, right, Jamie? Isn't that our plans? Yeah. The battery forward. We'll do an eight. Eight gauge, because we'll have to add us a switch, because it won't be running through the main switch on the boat. So we'll have to have an off and on switch on it. Right. Okay. So we'll have we'll have to. So I'll have to turn my live scope transducer on, or my live scope unit on. The right. black box actually right, yeah, right, actually yeah. turns turns the live scope portion of it on. Yeah. Right. The locator will still run. No, it'll all run off. You'll have to turn. It won't. Uh, it won't come on. It won't run off the new switch. Right. That'll just be for the live scope portion of it. Okay. Okay. But you'll still have to. Turn the uh, locator on; it won't come on when right, the other two. Right, right, just just like it was when it. Right, was on right, just like it was there, except it's going to be running off an eight gauge wire. Right. And then when I when I install my right height pole on there that separates out that transducer, hopefully that will eliminate maybe all the interference or close to it. Right. Yeah, we'll give her. That's what we're see. trying. That's the goal. That's what we're right trying to accomplish, and uh, uh, and we and you know also I never did update that unit the software. Uh, since we updated yeah, it we last time, we too. can do that here because we've got uh, Wi Fi. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You so bet. we're going to update our software also. If you've got a Garmin live scope and you haven't updated the software, they've had quite a few updates. Uh, so they come out pretty regularly. So if you've got a Garmin unit, uh, make sure you have your software updated because it does make a, a huge difference. And uh, they, they have a switch now or a button, I think, that comes with one of the new software programs that eliminates your ghost tree. Uh, and so we're gonna, I don't have that on any of mine, but I think that I should be able to update this unit software and I may, I may, I may get that. So uh, we're gonna have a really clear unit, I think, by the time we end up with everything that we're doing. Well, as you can see, Jamie is diving into his work there, yeah. trying to get that, uh, that eight gauge wire started there. And uh, what we do is we put a wire, we run a wire up through there and it's, it's a fishing, it's called fishing a wire to the front of the boat. And we're using a good quality eight gauge wire. Still and that's a big wire. Eight gauge is big, big wire. You can kind of take a look at what we've got right here. That's what we're putting on there. Two bucks a foot. That's what that costs, two dollars a foot. That's a big eight gauge, that's huge wire. I mean, huge wire. Now the boats come with 10 and 12, depending on the boat. Ranger boats come with 10, I believe. But we've moved up to a larger size yet, and Jamie is now is noodling. noodling yeah. <laughs> he's in there noodling, trying to get that. But uh, while he's noodling, I'm polishing the boat. And you can see the wire that he's running up through there. This is uh, this is his fishing wire. He's going to hook that uh, eight gauge wire to that and run to the front of the boat. And once that's done, it'll actually get pretty simple after that, won't it, Jamie? Yeah, yeah. once you get that wire, and on these, I mean, you don't have a solid tube from the back to the front. Yeah. So that's why we're right here. Just, yeah. You gotta go right. there and then next step on up. Okay. And of course, one of the things we got, of course, you got a power button on a Ranger boat, so you can, you turn the power off, so you don't have to worry about shorting anything out or getting a wire hitting a, a hot wire or anything like that. Everything's cool. <laughs> and once you get run up, your wires run up here to the top, it's just a matter of, Hooking them into your black box, right, Jamie? Yeah. Well, and of course, we're going to hook our, since that's essentially a standalone unit for uh -huh. our pen optics, uh -huh. we're going to hook uh, uh, the power to the same wire. So, so well, obviously, if you were probably on a, uh, a unit where you also had it on your trolling motor as well, you may not want to do it that way because some people do like to shut that. Well, pen actually, off. actually, once I put my right height on here, this will be on a separate pole, but it still will be attached to the trolling motor. Right, yeah, but once again, it'll just be a standalone right. Garmin panoptic live scope unit. Right. You're not reading down scans, asking and all. So that. we won't be able to read anything else with that unit right there. Right, just like it is now. Well, yeah, yeah it's still networked. So you could still read, you can still yeah, read everything else. You can still else. read. Yeah. 
Yeah, still split yeah. the screen if I want right. to run run yeah. down and yeah, you can down and down in live scope. Yeah. yeah, okay. Now if I run down in live scope, though, am I still running off just that wire? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that should be clear. I'll try all the scenarios and see what we got. But I, this should we should have this problem well in hand. We hope. We hope. We'll see. We'll find <laughs> that's out. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, ain't that's it? the deal. <laughs> Okay, we've kind of got her done now. I'm going to have Jamie just do a little quick recap of what we've done. Now, we haven't videoed everything, obviously, because there's a lot of running all the wires and everything. But a little quick recap of what we do to change your wire out and put an 8-gauge wire running from your battery up to your live scope. And the professional insula insulation people up in Tulsa that do nothing but rig boats, they don't sell boats, they don't sell parts, they just rig boats, and they rig a lot for tournament guys, they all say to put the 8-gauge wire in. And... Uh, so that's what we're going to see, and we'll see how it works. I'll let you know. All right, kind of a, uh, it is a recap, uh, kind of in reverse order. Going to kind of tell you everything, uh, all the components we used, all the parts. Uh, I think Dad mentioned that we're replacing wire, not necessarily replacing, I guess. We're really adding wire. Uh, because, and, and like uh, you told me, you get paid to rig boats, too, all the time. Yeah, there you go. So it's not just the yeah, guys yeah, in Tulsa. Exactly. You, you recommend this, too. Yeah, and, and you know, the most of the newer boats really have big enough wire on them that will handle the voltage. Uh, and it, the biggest thing I think that uh, most of these low carrier companies uh, do that is kind of a liability wise too because you know, they don't want that, those wires getting hot. But we're going to see if this makes a difference on uh, the problem Dad's having with the interference. And uh, uh, I'm sure he mentioned there's lots of videos we looked for out there, but nobody talks about interference. They talk about, well, I'm doing this, that uh, the uh, for battery, battery deal. Save the battery. On it. Uh, because their batteries aren't staying up. Well, uh, what Dad says is they don't get good enough batteries. So, uh, and I, I use Superstar batteries, so my, I don't have any battery problem. We're just trying to make sure get rid, get rid of as much interference as we can because we run our live scopes up on real high gain in order to see everything and see it real well and see it large. And, and that's the thing. A lot of people, I guess, are, are turning that gain down to get to get rid of that interference. Of course, you're going to miss some, you know, seeing some You miss some and, stuff. And you can't see your lures as good. And, yeah. and uh, so we want to get rid of the interference. And, and uh, we are going to do another video showing installing a right height pole uh, for to put my uh, live scope transducer on a separate uh, motor system where I can run it I can have my min code on, on uh, spot, spot lock. lock, and I can still run the other. So, uh, with its own motor, and, and and that will separate it from the trolling motor shaft also, which should help the interference. So we should, hopefully, we're going to have a pretty pretty clear screen up there. Right. All right. So, so what did you do? Let's here? let's just run through uh, kind of the materials we used. Uh, we elected to put a shutoff breaker back here, and uh, two things. Anytime you run along a uh, run of wire. You want to have a breaker back here at the motor. That way, if a mouse gets in there somewhere and chews it and shorts it out somewhere, you know, from here forward, it's going to trip back here at the battery. And these uh, Garmin's, the, uh, the actual graph and the, uh, the live scope box, both of those are fused from where we hooked up there. That comes from the factory that way. But see, a lot of people that run wire, you know, long strand, put a fuse on that end, which is great. It protects whatever it is there, but you've got a lot of open area there if you ever get short it's just going to get really hot and you know and mice chew wires they, 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 they chew wire. always have always will we, we work on that a lot but uh, uh what, what i what i used it's a uh, th marine product it's uh, it's actually built for a trolling motor it's probably a little overkill as far as the size of the breaker uh, but uh you know we were needing a breaker as well as a shutoff switch back here because we really had no room up by where the panoptics box is to put a, a toggle switch to, to power it on and off. So we elected to do it back here, mounted the little switch right here. It's just simple on and off, but it serves as our breaker uh, as well uh, at the battery for the run. And also uh, we put it right there by the, the power switch. So so we'll know, we, we, we just reminds us every time we turn it on, we're gonna have to flip that on to get to get the, uh, the, the live scope box to right. have power right. to it, that's one thing a lot of people may not do i know, I know uh, you do it's really easy just to shut this off because it shuts locators off if you left the aerator pump running or something you don't have a battery drain when you unhook the boat i shut out. mine off all the time yeah, i shut mine know, off and that's and what's hook, nice about these. i shut mine off and i hook up my four bank charger uh to a battery charger every time while i leave my boat park the new smart chargers we have nowadays you can leave them hooked up to electric all the time so i've got power turned off my boat 
So if I get some of my grandkids or now great grandkids up here, they can play with all the switches they want yep. in the boat. It doesn't hurt anything. I don't have to worry about something turned on, burning up a, a bilge pump or, or burning up something in there and and, and uh, leaving it running because there's no power. Okay. There's no power. So we put that back here. Like I say, you don't necessarily have to have a 50 amp breaker. This is really a setup for a trolling motor, but uh, uh, there's all kinds of different resettable or uh, switchable, not resettable, but where you manually turn it off. Most of my other smaller breakers that I normally keep here, they're uh, not one you can shut off and on and when they trip, you can reset. So that's what we put back here. Of course, ran our wire all the way down. And, and that's the opposite side, actually, of where all the other wires run. No. Oh, it's not no, the same no. side? And we, we, try, we started to because the uh, reason being on that side, you just have the trolling motors. And honestly, my uh, uh, pull wire wasn't long enough to reach down <laughs> that one side. So that's why we, we nixed that deal and came back to so the We side. pull that through with wire. Uh, we pull that through with a, 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 right. what we call the fishing wire, pull and, wire. And the next thing we did is used one of these, just a, kind of a little uh, uh, terminal block. And that's what I've got right here. And so uh, uh, we got our two wires coming from the back and going. Now these are individualized. Now, once I, uh, before we get up, I'm gonna put black tape around there just so nothing can get around there. But uh, we've got our, our hot and our negative coming in here. And on this, these side, I could have obviously ran more wires and used these, but we've got our eight gauge wire at the front. So right. now we're going to the Garmin side of it and so those are what Garmin says you know once you make that run so what I did I just combined these into one ring terminal on the hot side and one ring terminal on the ground side right these wires here for the NEMA network uh, uh, if you've installed your Garmin before you know uh, you don't use anything with the most, most typical bass fishermen don't a lot of the saltwater guys where they get the radars and all the other options you can add use that so most uh, freshwater fishermen will say uh, and <clears throat> don't utilize that so I didn't hook those up but like I said these are fused right here uh, well, of course uh, you know we really didn't talk about mounting the units these units have been on there uh, this is the one uh, the power wire runs to it and then we've got the panoptic box mounted inside uh, inside, inside our storage board. box our rod storage yeah. box the port, yeah. uh, starboard side box so uh, we should have we've got good clean power nothing else is on this other than those two items. Now, one thing uh, I think we mentioned before that uh, this is still networked with your other units. Right. So everything on, you're out fishing. The guy in the back, if he wants to see what you're looking at, because you're not going to let him, you know, watch his jig go in front of whatever you're catching. Uh, he can sit there and drool and wish he was from the back <laughs> locator. Jamie, you know that I show the fish and I let you throw at it first. Right. I get, the, I got that little dig there, son. Come on uh, now. I know you're the typical back of the boat yeah. guy. Oh, oh you're well, hogging I'm, the water. I'm going to flip the power onto that unit real quick. All right, turn it on. All right, so we should have power up here. Turn it on. And uh, if it's going to work, we should have a pan optics option. As soon as it gets fired you up. You got your switch back there? And uh, it'll give you a pan, op a pan optic option on the screen. Yeah. You got your switch turned on the back? Yeah, this, this, okay. that switch powers this as well. Right. Yeah. So if this comes on, it's got power to the pan optic right. box. And it takes a little bit to load. Of course, we're inside of a building, which will <laughs> take a little bit longer to load. All those wires and all that mess up there, of course, will go down inside the boat. So that's all going to be neatly covered up by the other, the gar other garment that's going to set in there. Of course, it'll be nice and pretty once it's all, yeah, all back it'll together. Be, it'll just be like everything, that. it'll be, be nice and look good. <clears throat> Hit my agree button. We're going to agree. And now we got pan all optics right, jumping so, up there. So we've got a pan optics button. There's our pan optics button on there. Yeah, if you if you forget to, if you if you forget to flip that switch back there, nothing's going to come out. There's no uh, power. Yeah, yeah, this located right here won't, won't, even, won't even come yeah. on. So, I mean, if that unit's got power, your pan optics has got power. Now, once we put all the wires back in there and button <coughs> that up, that's going to be real clean and neat. Now, and let's see uh, here, make sure our network portion, we haven't checked this yet at all. So, yeah, this, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is a real dry run run right here. Yeah, so, so far so good. We'll see if the network works uh, to get the live scope on that if on we want this to. unit and then the back one. And I'm not going to do it on, on this boat, but I, I may even stack those uh, uh, in the front the next time around. I don't know. There's just so many different ways you can rig them, and I really need two units up front. 
only one I need on the console, not fishing tournaments. So I was fishing tournaments, I would put two up there. Oh, that's got right my pan optics, pan optics there. Options, so. so we hit the pan optics there. We're going to get now. That's going to be the exact same thing we get on this screen right. here. Now, normally you wouldn't want to do that. You could if you wanted, but I normally have that on something else. But I do like to Ethernet that to the one on the console. That way, the person in the back of the yeah. boat can uh, can watch and see what you know when we point out fish up here. Now, the only difference once we get the right height pole on my transducer. Uh, what the trolling motor is doing really won't make any difference because that'll be on separate separate power, and we'll be uh, able to uh, shoot pictures out in front, whichever direction we want to go with that. And we'll be doing a, a video on that also and show you how to install the uh, ride height. I'm actually going to go to the ride height factory, RM Industries, over in Purdy, Missouri, and we're going to do a video on that coming up here just uh, in the next few days, probably. Uh, something totally unrelated, but I thought was interesting. I put a uh Garmin system on uh, an older boat uh, this week, and Garmin has changed their wiring on their transducer on that unit. Uh -huh. And instead of how you got two wires here, it's a single bigger wire. And, and previously, they, did, they wanted you to use uh, black tape and so zip ties all down it because right. of the size of the wire and everything. I guess right. they're afraid of breaking the big ones. But uh, on that newer one, the, the, the installation instructions have changed to where you can use uh, uh, zip ties or cable ties. Uh, with the exception, they still want you to use black tape here and there on that pivot point where it's moving back and forth right, a lot. Okay. So that's that's something new that uh, uh, has happened. You know, within I don't know the last. Uh, it's probably been about a month since I put one on prior to this. And, one, and so. we talked about it a little bit. We want you want to make sure everybody uh, does with whatever software updates that Garmin makes available because it really makes a difference. We haven't done the software update on this, and we're going to set that up and do it here in just a little bit. Yeah, I have to do it. It's been a while since we've done one, so I'm going to have to stumble through it. Well, we'll, 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 we'll do that. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, do we'll, that we'll get that done. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, we haven't really done one on this boat, and I've had this boat now for several months. Yeah. So uh, we got to check and see what software is on there, but I think we can do it an option that might even help more of what we're trying to accomplish, and that's getting as clean a screen as we possibly can. You bet, and I think I think everything looks like it's gonna work. We just clean up these wires here and clean up the mess on here, and, and uh, gotta take the lake and try it out. All right, good job. If somebody wants to come in, Jamie, and uh, get uh, get you their, their, uh, an installation like this, you, you do it, right? Oh yeah, yeah, we can do it. And uh, we also sell the Garmin units, yeah. obviously, and we'll be selling the right height units, the right height poles they wanna, Add a, uh, add a add a uh, transducer pole to it. The, the advantage of the transducer pole is that you can put your motor on spot lock, and uh, and and run your uh, live scope separately, and 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 be so you run your trolling motor. But you have it on your trolling motor, not on a separate pole, right. so you don't have to worry about attaching it anywhere. And it works out really good. Plus, it flattens the bottom out, which is a tremendous advantage in fishing. I appreciate it, son. Let's you button her up. Let's button her up. Go to the lake. I'm ready to go fishing. <laughs>